So let's figure it out, right? I'm not going to micromanage you to this extent because it's honestly a waste of my time and a waste of your time to you're paying your attorneys to be making these arguments. She actually had her for that weekend. Okay. About 12 hours prior, she saw her for two days. Okay. And then um, it, it appears to me that you, you believe in strict compliance with the court's orders. Is that correct? Correct. Definitely. It is like so Okay. Um, have you recently? Um, been amenable to deviating from being flexible with the court orders. Yeah, if I could elaborate on, on the flexibility from the orders, I've tried to do that. That's documented very clearly in the Aptos chat log. Like you can go far back as when this uh, case started, but each time that we deviate from the orders, it always turns into some kind of issue. Either um, the failure to show up for an exchange or something um it just caught it, it increases conflict and so at what point to answer more directly at what point do i can i narrow that down where every time that i try to co-parent to the point of deviating from the orders and then the repayment of that i don't know there's multiple instances throughout this uh app post chat log okay can you give me one instance yeah, I mean, even after our last evidentiary hearing and the order that was issued, we were actually co-parenting pretty well for about three months, from about September through to December of 2021. And specifically, I mean, it was a little bit difficult. I mean, she, she had set a vacation to go to Detroit, and she just said it without actually asking me if she could have the extra days. And, of course, that disrupted the schedule. But that was documented in the app close chat log that she's she basically guilt tripped me because I was not so quick to just agree to allow her to just take the extra day and so um, through that process of discussion we did negotiate a settlement on it but I simply asked her I don't know the exact date if you gave me a moment I could probably find it but on the, I did ask her to um, please not do that again. Please not just schedule vacations and take days and then assume that I'm just going to automatically agree to that because I probably possibly could have already plans in place. So that was one occasion where we, we she deviated unilaterally, but we still worked it out. Okay. And then further from that, um, shortly thereafter, she asked for time for this uh, to go on a trip, to go on a cruise. It was like 19 months. Uh, there's no question pending. It called for a narrative, not a responsive. You can just finish your statement. Go ahead. Uh, the, okay. Well, this specifically, an event took place <coughs> on or around December fifteenth to the twenty, or fifteenth to the twentieth, somewhere around there, where because of the co-parenting and allow. What are you talking about? We're we're talking about the deviation from an order. I said, what year are you talking? Oh, I apologize. About? Uh, 2021. December of 2021 and in that particular occasion we deviated from the order because she was going to go on a vacation that was 
not going to be able to go on to. My specific answer to that was, was quite young. She was only about 19 months. A child. Think. Yeah, uh, I'm sorry, minor child. Uh, but, but basically, um, because of the long time frame, I specifically stated that, yes, we can do some video calls while she's on that two to three week occasion where she would be away from I'm, I'm sorry, Gigi, our child. Um, but I also agreed that we could actually do some time. She asked for a few hours to see our child before that vacation took place. And I actually offered more time than the few hours. I offered, what would you like? It, the negotiation landed at between 4 o'clock and 8 o'clock. She would get her from 4 to 8. And then a few days later, because of that deviation of the order, normally the exchanges, I think, were around 6 o'clock. Um, but uh, because of that deviation, Four days later, she claims that she thought it was at 9 o'clock, even though we made it very clear multiple times in this app close message, messaging blog, it states that she herself stayed at 8 p.m. Okay. And so that deviation resulted in she took her with her on this vacation, totally unplanned. And okay. You know, um, there's, there's, there's testimony. She testified about this trip to the um, Bahamas with her fiance. Correct. Okay. And you heard her testify that she, um, that you weren't available for the exchange so that you could provide, she could provide your daughter to you. You heard that testimony, correct? correct? Okay. Um, and you also heard her testify that she had to purchase a ticket um, because she couldn't get in touch with you. She had to purchase a ticket for the minor child. Correct. You recall that? Is, is that testimony accurate? That's not accurate. How do you know? Well, where do I start? But first of all, the ticket I saw with my own eyes, the itinerary when she purchased the ticket, because I was able to gain that information through a subpoena that I filed and getting a hold of her um, financial documents, which actually has a confirmation on there. When you type in the confirmation, you can pull up the itinerary. And so that day of where she actually has name on the ticket was about a month prior to judge, the actual vacation. Judge, just a brief objection. Obviously, the judge is the best evidence for all those documents. I don't believe we're produced, and that those subpoenas, those very subpoenas were stricken by the discovery commission in this case. Well, he can certainly testify to the research that he did. Yeah, I mean, I think he can testify to what he's remembering and what he looked into that. So that's a little bit. Um, Okay, and, and so, so what did you learn? So I learned that actually his name was on that ticket, and that is that was documented through Frontier. I don't have the flight information on me right now, but I can certainly okay. provide it. Um, so just try not to say her full name, please. I apologize. Um, there was more, that, there was three parts to that question, I think, or two parts. Okay, well, um, my question was, um, did you learn? Um, did you learn that, that wasn't um, accurate? That Correct. testimony. Yeah. Okay. And so um, you also heard her testify that you could not be um, couldn't be reached. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. And I can elaborate that. Okay. And why were you? And why could you not be reached? I was on an appointment for work, and okay. the nature of that time, my schedule was loaded up meeting with people and working mostly on weekends because of being a single dad and having her the bulk of the week. That was mostly when I could do a lot of my work. And so I'd already left to go for an appointment. I stayed until approximately 8.25, maybe 8.30, assuming that the exchange would take place at 8 p.m. I texted her in the app. At like I'm, I'm trying to go on memory. I think I said, look, it's 8.10. Where are you? 8.15, 8.20. I said, I got to go. I was already late for an appointment that I had to engage in over in Blue Diamond area. And so that's where that's where I headed out. I didn't see the message where she offered to do the exchange at the airport until something around 10.30 at night. You can verify in the app close messages when a person sees the message and each party also understands and knows when a message is seen in the app. So she had known that I didn't see that message. Oh, and further, I, I, I also was under the belief and understanding based on her tip, on, on what she told me in the app, that her flight was leaving on the 11th, not the 10th, or the following day, if I recall correctly. Okay. So I never knew that she was flying out that night. Okay. 
And had you agreed, um, well, I'll strike that. Sorry. Um, let's turn, I'm going to dive right into this. Um, um, if you'll go to page 588 in your book, it is uh, Exhibit J. Binder one or two? Uh, binder one, although some people seem to have it in two. But no, it should be in binder one. And I apologize, could you repeat that page? Uh, 588, please. And, and uh, 587. Bates, right? Bates, yes, that's correct. I believe I'm there if it's taking place around July of Um, based on my research in the co-parenting app, it can be documented up to about 60, or 26, 26 separate okay. appointments, whether it's the dentist or her pediatrician. Okay. And why do you, why, why are you are making all these appointments? During the bulk of the time, that's where she's at during the week, and um, it's just kind of most of the time. There's more days available in the middle of the week, although some of them were available on Saturdays. The majority of the full time available for a lot of these folks are Monday through Friday. Oh. Well, let's look at that. Page 587. At the very bottom is that you on July 1st, 2023. Mm -hmm. Text Send texting, because texting message to the plaintiff, correct? Is it where I state the next appointment has been scheduled, a 14-day notice has been given? Right. Who who did who was the 14-day notice provided to? <coughs> Excuse me. I provided that to plaintiff. Okay. But I also followed up with letting her know, because this was a complaint, I believe, that she was lodging, that Saturday appointments are always also available for her to schedule on her own time. Okay. And I said that right after it. Okay. And did she ever make an appointment on a Saturday? Not once, ever. Okay. Uh, scratch that, or if I can just clarify, she did go into an emergency room one time on an appointment. Not, it wasn't an appointment, but an emergency room visit that cost $1,000 for, I don't know, I think because of our child had a sniffle or something. I'm not really quite sure. Okay. Is that the um, emergency room visit that you issue of payment? Correct. Okay. And have you seen, um, why do you characterize it as a sniffle? Well, if you look at the medical record, which I have, and she also stated, or she also provided a copy. It's not in this evidentiary uh, setup, but it's within the app close. There's a picture of it. She took a picture of it and sent me the medication that she was given, which she does comment that she was given Zofron, that she approved of that that day with the doctor. Um, and so it, it's there, but um, when I saw the medical record myself, Object, the full record. Objection to him testifying about hearsay. To him testifying what? About hearsay, what's in the content of a, re a record. Yeah, that's his thing. We don't have the record in evidence. Okay. Um, do you have an issue paying for uh, your daughter's medical care? Absolutely not. Okay. All right. I just want to get back to that page 587 again. At the top, or it's a 7 1 2023, um, 12 p.m., where you, you state, no, there will not be any providing of three potential appointments to choose from. No. What's that all about? She requested. Who's she? I'm sorry, plaintiff requested to, for me to go and, and with each appointment, ask each doctor, dentist, 
that if I can find out what three days work with that particular provider mm -hmm. and then come back to her and see if those would work, which I did try to do that. Through Anthem Hills Pediatrics, I notified them to ask them if that was even possible. They said the nature of Dr. our schedule. Uh, you can't tell me something of what they say. Um, was that an option? It's not an option. Okay. Um, okay. Not because of my choice, but okay. I tried. Gotcha. It, so. gotcha, gotcha. Okay. Um, okay. Um, you know, let's start at the, um, the relocation. You, you filed a motion with this court, um, and you stated that you couldn't find work here, at least in your field. Is that accurate? Yeah, specifically design work as a designer at a swimming pool company, construction company. Okay. And how long have you been in that business? 28 to 31 years. It's hard to come up with an exact based on the activity in that business, full-time, part-time, that sort of thing. But it's pretty much all I know. Okay. Okay. And um, what did the work look like here for you in Las Vegas? Uh, before your relocation to Texas? Well, as stated in the motion is grant, you know, there's there's not really an opportunity for, I'd say, lucrative earnings within the industry right here in the local area for a couple different reasons, specifically because of the the homing crisis, the home crisis, um, lend, lending, but also specifically because of the moratorium that was placed on pools, swimming pools here, which limit the size and construction in in that and there was just no openings anywhere where I applied whether that was calling people calling contacts or even going in and filling out an application there was just no opportunity they wouldn't even provide an application for me okay and so you got a position in Texas what, what is the name of the um, the first company that town, we, the town. Oh, Austin Texas Austin oh, okay and um, where did you where did you obtain employment? So the first uh, employment offer, which was uh, Serenity Pools and Outdoors, that's what uh, created the, the relocation. They were very generous in their first offer, um, but then now I I feel like I've upgraded to a better offer with the nationwide company Anthony and Sullivan Pools. Okay. And that took place in August. In August, what was the offer from Serenity? Serenity was structuring it to where, because in the swimming pool industry, there's there's ramp up time. You know, you, you 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 have to do a design, and then there's time period between making that agreement with customers and then it building to create profit. So you don't get paid immediately, generally. But what he had set up is where I'd get like a signing bonus, five thousand per month, additional, on top of the, I believe it was two thousand. Yeah, I believe it was 2000 a month minimum structure of, of, of compensation is how you worked it. And the idea was by the time the third month came around, then those would translate into commissions, which would then add to the 2000 base salary is essentially the way it worked. Okay. So the annual income from that job uh, would have been, had you stayed, what? It's difficult to say because then he then he increased it and he said because he, he saw the value and he's like look let's let's do a four thousand dollar base plus a four percent commission on each contract that I sold so but ultimately that didn't it's hard to say an annual because at the very minimum it probably would have been forty eight thousand a year but that would be if I sold no pools okay. so if I just sold average contract being one hundred and ten thousand if I sold if I sold just one pool a month. That would be an additional 4,400 income on top of the 4,000. Were you, the were you selling pools there? I did. Okay. Mm -hmm. And um, you're not there anymore. I'm not. Why not? Kind of a couple different reasons. Um, but ultimately, there was some difficulty with the scheduling. My availability um, that he needed me at certain points where it was coming into conflict with the uh, video FaceTime. But also, ultimately, he's 
he ended up getting three or four lawsuits in a period of 30 days for this condition in the industry called ASR, which is concrete cancer. Oh, okay. All right. So he's forced to close his doors. Okay, and so how soon did you get another job in Austin? Um, I interviewed through Anthony and Sylvan Pools and, uh -huh. and landed that uh, on August 12th was my start date. I can't remember when I was awarded the job. I want to say it was somewhere at the beginning of August that I was awarded it, but the way it works with a corporation like that, I had to go through a bunch of background checks and whatnot. And the official start date, though, I do remember is August 12th. Okay, and how are you doing at that job? Doing pretty well. Um, this month alone, uh, well, not this month, I apologize. Uh, um, September 30th, um, the official tally is I tied for first place in the um, company nationwide. Nationwide. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. And so, what is your projected uh, annual income with this employer, it's Sylvan, correct? Yeah. So, Sylvan, it's 5% commission. There's also benefits and other tons of other uh, things, stability, but the how large the company is, but I don't know. Probably, I mean, I, I have a contract of 75000 minimum, but I have to um, sell 22 pools in a whole year. But I've already sold eight pools in one month. So I don't know where to land. It's hard to know these things without, you know, seeing where it's going to land. But I do know that that would be the quota that I've been, I've, you know, my, my first quota was I was supposed to sell one pool by November 30th in order to maintain that 75000 minimum uh, annual earnings. But I can, I guess it's hearsay, but I, all I can say is I can tell you what everybody else makes there. Okay. I know that that's hearsay, so I guess it doesn't matter. But. Okay. Would it be fair to say you're doing, it sounds like you're doing well? Yes. Okay. Love the job. I'm doing very well at it. All right. And can I ask you this? So you said that you couldn't find work here as a pool designer. Correct. But at some point you were working here as a pool designer. Correct. When did you lose that job? I lost that job on or around September or October of 2022. My final check was, was actually the first week of September, I believe. Or it might be the first week of October. Mm -hmm. Whenever the moratorium went into effect. Mm -hmm. Who were you working for? That was lifeguard pools. Why did you lose your job? Because he couldn't sustain what was coming. As far as there was already a downturn in the market, and there was also, with the moratorium, we did have a lot of business that summer prior because everybody was trying to rush to get in before the moratorium took place. But then in that first month, right after the moratorium, he got no interest. We had no interest at all. And how long have you worked there? I believe I started there June of 2019. So after you lost that job, what did you do? I tried to look for another one, um, but there wasn't really any opportunity. Everybody was waiting to see what would happen with the moratorium in the business. And there was a short period of time where I, I tried to do drafting, and there's just there wasn't enough volume to sustain that. But did you work? I didn't work. You didn't work. I was unemployed. So you didn't work again until you moved down to Texas? Yes, my next job was landing the job in Texas. Okay. And if I could just make no, sure... There's no, no, there's no questions. So. Okay. okay. All right. Probably my wife.
or some of them are me as well. Okay. And um, what is the time frame for those photographs? This is basically from April until approximately August. Of what year? Of this year. Okay. And who, who is that in the photograph? That's our daughter. Okay. And I think on one picture it shows me doing a planting project with her. Okay. And then on another photo it shows my wife, her stepmother. Maybe a couple photos there. But. Okay. Your Honor, I would move to admit the exhibit. Do you have any objection? No. Okay, so H is admitted. Okay, um, and so um, where where are these photos taken? In Austin, various different spots, but a lot, you know, backyard, the, the play park that's right by our home. There, um, one of them was a uh, we're you know practicing walking to school, um, our, our princess room. And um, I wish they were in color, but yeah. I don't know why they aren't either. Um, so my apologies. So, what um, was the, oh, one of them specifically was at an event that we got to take her to, Disney on Ice. We could actually afford it this year with that. And then the home that we have has a whirlpool where she likes to play around in the whirlpool. Okay. So uh, these activities that are portrayed and are depicted in these photographs, this is, I'm playing devil's advocate here. Come on, these are things that she could do in Las Vegas, correct? Not really. Why not? I mean, the, the temperature is very hot here and dry, and although it does get hot in, in Austin, it's, it's more temperate, and it's just full of greenery. It's, um, I mean, I, she, the, our daughter is uh, very outdoorsy. She loves to play outdoors, but whenever the summer took place here, that wasn't, she wasn't, out there for more than five minutes, really. It was so hot. Um, we can't really keep plants alive outside here. I mean, not, not the ones we're growing here. I mean, these are blueberries, and these are what she picked out, but... Um, Where are the blue What plant are that? Well, they're in their, their starting stage. We did this, uh, I think, within a few days of arriving in Austin, that we did this uh, planting project. But, but something like that would never... We wouldn't be able to grow that here. Um... Now, how far is that flight from Austin to Las Vegas? Well, if you count getting to the airport a couple hours early, that's about two hours, and then the flight's actually three hours, and then you have offloading, which is approximately an hour. So it's about five hours each time that you make the trip. Okay. Uh, let's, um, if you'll go to exhibit R, and it may be in the second book. I'm seeing photos of the neighborhood. What are those? Um, this is the path is the path that we walk to school each day. I'm able to spend about 15 minutes. It's about three quarters of a mile, but we are able to have our daddy daughter walk time to school each morning. I do that with her. I'm able to walk her to school. And uh, it's just one of those neighborhoods full of trees, full of greenery and squirrels and different things. There's a lot of wildlife there. As a matter of fact, even deer are in the area. Is, is that your neighborhood that's depicted in these photos? That is correct. Okay. Who took these photographs? I took these, um, but I actually used Google. So if you look to the lower left, you, these can be verified through a Google, through the Google app that this is the path that we take. How, how long does it take you to um, get to school each day? It says 13 minute walk, but with it's a 15 minute walk. Why is that? She's small, she's five years old. She likes to look, she likes to, she loves to look at the squirrels and the other day we saw a skunk. Oh. A lot of wild, wildlife around here. Okay. Your Honor, I would move to the exhibit five. Can we move to the exhibit five? No. So it's exhibit five over there. And then um, exhibit two. What, what is that? So these are more pictures. Um, the first one being. Feeding her, her friends.
friend squirrel, Cherry, she actually has two of them, Cherry and Sari. This is taking care of, I'm sorry, this is our, our child, taking care of um, the plants that she had potted. Um, it's a routine that we do each day. And then roly polies, um, feeding the hummingbird feeder. It's raining, I mean, it's. Diff I wish these were in color, but it's raining, there's a lot of rain there this year, and just um, loves to run around playing the rain. And then our daughter is, is in this photo with my son and my, um, these are my adult children that is, that are, you know, with my, or with our daughter uh, there in that photo at, at a boot okay. camp graduation for Mikhail. Okay, son. that appears to be an exhibit P that you're, that, who oh. took these photographs? Um, I believe, I believe I took all of these, yeah. All these ones I took. And what time frame are, are those from? Again, that would be from approximately April till uh, August of this year. Okay. And you were, you said that one photograph is your son and your daughter? Yes. Do they live in Austin? Uh, no. This is San Antonio, Texas. And my son, Mikhail, was graduating um, from Space Force, and we all had a family event to be there in San Antonio at, okay. the, at, the, at the base. How close is um, San Antonio to... It's like about an 80-minute drive. Okay. Your Honor, I would move to admit Exhibit P. Any objection to that? Okay, now you, you heard testimony that... Um, The plaintiff doesn't believe that you have any uh, support system down in Austin. Is that accurate? That's not true. Okay. Well, why is that inaccurate? Well, as uh, indicated in the motion originally, uh, we have a dear friend of mine that I've known since 17 years old, and uh, that's Marvin Ross. And so, uh, I mean, we've known each other a long time, considering I'm 47. And there's also about a three-hour drive away is where all her cousins that she adores. She's got ten cousins, or I'm sorry, nine, nine cousins, and um, that is in the Dallas area, which is about a three-hour drive away. But they often come and visit, and we visit there too. That's actually documented in the Aptos log, where we went there one year for Thanksgiving. Who is we? Um, myself, our daughter, and my wife. So, So the school system, let's um, move to exhibit I. Yeah, this is according to Texas Educa Education Agency, and this was their 2022 school report card. Um, part of the Round Rock Independent School District in Williamson County. How did they fare? Extremely well. Overall rating 97 out of 100, student achievement 96 out of 100, school progress 95 out of 100, closing gaps 100 out of 100. And I could go further on this, but, but I mean, there's a lot of data here, but the bottom line is, is the proficiency scores is what's, what I'm mostly interested in as a, as a rating system for a school, and this school uh, is ranked number 12 in the, in, the, in the entire state of Texas. But more importantly, their efficiency, or I mean, their um, proficiency, meaning when children are tested, yes. um, they are 87% in math and 87% in reading. Did you compare this particular school, and you said this is where your child is? This is where she currently attends. She currently attends. Did you compare this with the schools 
in Las Vegas? Yes. Okay, and what are the differences? Where, uh, we don't know where our daughter would have landed, you know, because we did. So, uh, Ms. Mar, you're asking him to compare yes, the school to every single school oh, in no, Las Vegas, no. or what school? No, the schools that you and the plaintiff had in mind. Okay, gotcha. There. So, what are those two? Uh, Pinecrest I know. and Vegas. Well, you need to put that into testimony then. Okay. So, what schools are we talking about? Yes, yeah, so Pinecrest and Vegas. I don't know those schools. I, I, I just learned about all those ratings and um, from the pleadings, or not the pleadings, but whenever all this came. Um, plaintiff has not ever reached out to me regarding traditional legacy schools or Pinecrest. I've never received any information, not through the, the parenting app or anything. That was new to me, that she would have the consideration of having that school, considering when I was living here, it would have been a 40, probably 40, 45 minute drive during that time of day. The traffic's very congested. And I don't know how I'd ever be able to get her to one of those schools when I was living in North Las Vegas. The schools that were under consideration were the lottery schools. We, we didn't ever enroll her. What are those schools? So there one was, two, correct? there was two. What were they? There was um, so Freedom So mom testified that the school that her G would go to would be Legacy or Pinecrest. I never received you, any information on that. You don't get to talk over me. Oh, I so you don't have any information about how they rank Legacy or Pinecrest, correct? Correct. So you're offering testimony regarding what school and why. Um, while the um, question, um, I'll withdraw my question since the school, well, the school that you anticipated that the child would go to here in Nevada. How does the school in Texas compare to that? There were two schools that were under consideration that ultimately um, plaintiff agreed that we would see if we got past the lottery. One was Somerset Academy, and the other one was called Freedom Classical Academy. These are magnet schools. Those schools, we elected together to enroll her into Freedom Classical because it outperformed on the proficiency scores the Somerset Academy. Okay. However, it didn't get to that because the re with the relocation, she ended up in, in Austin. But specifically, the ratings, I'm going to kind of go based on my best memory, but I believe they were 37%. Objection relevant. Because they asked me to... Well, are, are you guessing or, or you have... Do you have the specific documentation regarding the schools? I'm, I'm yes, sure. I believe I put it in the parenting app, all of the proficiency ratings. Okay. Um, but he performed the research, so he can... Well, if I have a moment, I can look in the parenting app. Well, you did the research, correct? I did. Okay. What did your research reveal? Okay. Yes, we had as evidence for what, and even with the best evidence for what the documents, printouts, and you probably saw that had not been produced or provided in this litigation. Testifying memory, it's obscure, vague, probably ambiguous. Okay, so I'm um, overruled, but I'll just put the way to it that it sure, just say you. thinks it deserves. So you're giving me your best recollection of what Freedom Classical's rating was at what point in time? This was based on a 2023 report. And you looked that up when? It would have been January of this year. Okay, and what's your recollection of what that was said? Between 37 and 42 percent, because they do two, they do a rating of math proficiency and reading proficiency. I'm uh, sure Proficiency is where... Um, uh, sir, you don't need to be condescending to the court. I'm saying, what? I don't know what those percentages, you're saying 37 percent for what? Their proficiency in math is 37 percent? And then what was the other rating? 42%. For what? Reading. Okay. What? And that's that's your recollection? Well, I know the reading score was actually lower than the, the math score. The math score is always higher. So no, it would be the math score was 42% and the reading score was 37% for so Somerset that, Academy. But I thought we were talking about Freedom Classical. Yeah. Wasn't that the school you said she, she had decided upon? That was the one that we ultimately So why are you telling me about Somerset Academy? Because it 
it's hard to understand or it's hard to remember all these different okay, percentages. Okay, so you don't have any independent recollection of the ratings for free and classical the school that she would have gone to had she not relocated. I would say I would say forty-two percent. So are you guessing now, or you have an actual recollection of what of what you research? Well, I'm trying to figure because we for, I, when I did my research, I first researched Freedom Classical because it was closer, and then I researched Somerset. So based on when I researched it, those numbers. But then when I actually submitted it in the actual pleadings. Okay, so I'm going to sustain that objection then, and um, this line of testimony will be considered. Thank you. It's actually in the pretrial memo that was entered on August 6th, so all of the information is in there. So I'll move on. What are some of the extracurricular activities that uh, the child is doing in Austin? I can't sign her up for any. I haven't been able to get approval from plaintiff. She denied consent. Okay. Has she, um, have you reached out to her? Yes. And I gave her 21 days advance notice to enroll her in a program called uh, uh, KidStrong. KidStrong? Mm -hmm. Okay. And what is KidStrong? It's a leadership slash uh, confidence builder for, for children. It's not like gymnastics, but it's somewhat similar. They teach confidence, they teach leadership. Um, it's very parent involved, like parents have to be there to attend and watch. It's about 45 minutes, starting out one once a week. But um, it's physical activity as well. And so they're kind of increasing their mental acuity, uh, acuity as well as their uh, communication skills and leadership. It's nationwide. Okay, do they have one of those in Las Vegas? I believe they do. Okay. And if I'll turn to exhibit S, as in Second document is the email um, where Kid Strong says that you successfully Object, signed objection right there. Um, who printed out those documents? I printed them out from my email. Okay. And that was based on research that you performed? Objection, lady. Sustained. Okay. I would move to admit exhibit S. Okay. Foundation too should it just got stricken. Um, I'm going to object hearsay. So the objection is hearsay. How is it not hearsay, Ms. Keith? Well, the exception to the rule prepared in the business records exception prepared for um, the internet. Prepared for the internet? <laughs> to, have, to have a recordation of what the program offers. I don't know if that's true or not true, so I'm going to sustain that. Okay. Fair enough. Fair enough. Okay. In your opinion, um, and, and based on the research that you've done, uh, you believe that the child uh, 
will have a better educational experience in Austin as opposed to Las Vegas? Objection leading. Well, it's leading in calls for speculation too. So it's the same, but you can rephrase it. I got it. Um, do you believe that the educational experience for the child is in Texas is beneficial? I do. Objection calls for speculation and leading. It's opinion. It's his opinion, so we'll take it the way it's worked. So it's totally I do, yes. Um, why so? Well, a multitude of reasons, but one of them being that the education opportunities are just overall more superior as far as performance goes. And so that was one of the, the weighing factors. The other one was financially because of the opportunity there. There's just, there's, there's not a moratorium and there's more opportunity to succeed in the type of work that I do, the type of work that I've become a master at doing. And um, comparatively, there's just a lot more opportunity for recreation and, and things that appeal to our daughter, such as fishing, camping, nature. She loves outdoors and nature. And um, there's Travis Lake that's nearby, there's Colorado River, there's just a, it's hill country, it's full of oak trees and it's very green deer. Um, and so there's a lot of opportunity when it comes to experiencing some, some nature. Why, why Texas? Why not, um, why not Florida? Why not uh, Montana? Why, why, why Texas? Well, I didn't look at Montana. Um, I did actually look at Florida for their school systems um, because they did have some decent school systems in Florida, but it's such a far reach. It's, a, it's clear across the country. Um, it's a further flight. It's the drive there. I mean, there's a lot of reasons why Florida was not a, a top choice. Um, we didn't really consider every single state. It's not like we approached that. I had a, a situation where, where Austin was, was going to have the most growth opportunity financially. And so that's where it kind of started, and I had a friend there in the industry that made her a couple of referrals for me to be able to find employment there. And that went well. Ultimately, he made the referrals so that I could get into Anthony and Sylvan Pools in order to secure that job. So, there, but there's, there's other reasons too, the, the temperate climate. Um, I happen, myself, I happen to be from Wyoming originally, and I think it's healthy for children to learn outdoor skills such as fishing and camping. And, and it's difficult to do here, although we did the best we could with it, but it's just not <coughs> available when you're in the desert. Okay. How long had you lived in Las Vegas? Since approximately 14 years old on through until I just moved out. And I say Las Vegas, the Las Vegas area. Anderson, North Las Vegas, all different areas in Las Vegas. Okay, I'm going to switch gears. You heard the um, plaintiff testify that you had been, she suspected you had been drinking this past Saturday. Is that accurate? No. Okay. Um, how did that exchange go? We have it documented in the parenting app that it went fine, other than. I did express that if we could keep the exchanges at the security zone future on from the future on out, because oftentimes I'm leaving, I'm, I'm dropping and I'm leaving back on another plane shortly thereafter. But it went on time. I mean, well, I apologize. We were there early, but we waited, and the exchange took place other than having difficulty going to her mother. And she took five steps forward and then decided, no, she didn't want to go because of the look that she had on her mom's face. So what look was on the plaintiff's face? She looked to be under the influence of marijuana, in my opinion. Okay. And how did you, um, what did you do when the child stopped? Well, I mean, she came running back to me so I just talked to her and let her, let her knew that there's the court order in place. There's nothing we can do. Like, I, I can't. You have to go to your mom. 
ordering? No, I didn't say it like that, but I mean, I'm generalizing. That we have, we have a schedule in place, and we can't, like, we can't deviate from the schedule. So, do you have uh, experience in law enforcement? No, I don't. So, upon what are you basing your assumption that mom was under the influence of marijuana? She and I, a long time ago when we were together, we smoked marijuana together, and there was just based on my experience of observation of how she behaves. How was she behaving? Well, she couldn't stand still in one place, and her eyes were very, like, I couldn't even see, like her eyes were half open. And she seemed to be, to me, very tired and very timid. But it, it all demonstrated to me that, that something wasn't right, even to the point where it caused our daughter to run back. She literally came running back. So did you call the police? There was nothing I could do. I, I mean, I tried, I got on my phone, but the exchange had already taken place. She was in the car and she took off. So you were concerned that mother was under the influence of marijuana to the extent that she was not able to stand still, she was acting strange, and you let your child go with her into a vehicle that she was driving? She displayed this behavior right when our daughter was walking towards her and I was still in the process of trying to handle our daughter and look and observe why she wouldn't want to go to her. But by that time, when she actually did go to her, she was no longer, she was no longer in my custody. And I did get on my phone, and she was in a vehicle that I didn't under, I didn't, I don't know what vehicle she was in, because it wasn't her normal vehicle. Well, regardless of whether, you know, the child is technically in your custody or mom's custody, isn't the overriding concern here what's in her best interest? I agree. So why would you let her go with mom if you really thought mom was under the influence of marijuana? Well, I suspect that I couldn't prove it. I'm not able to prove whether or not she is. Okay. Did you, uh, did you ask her? No, she was 10, 12 feet away. And this is the this is the same month strike that. Okay. Um, now there was also an allegation that you were um, under the influence when the officer testified um, when you were dropping off, correct? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, were you under the influence that day? No. I, not much do you want me to elaborate, but no. Oh. I was tired from flying the night before. Okay. All right. And so you heard the officer testify that he smelled alcohol in your breath? Yes. Okay. And what did you say to that? The night before, I had a margarita, and it spilled. But the actual flight was arriving somewhere around, I want to say, midnight, Las Vegas time, which was somewhere around 2 a.m., my clock on Austin time, and I didn't. I stayed in the airport that night. I slept on the concrete floor, which I didn't get much sleep actually. Okay. All right. Were there any um, allegations of um, strike that?
page one of the exhibit. Yes, this was uh, on 925 specifically on September 25th, 2021. She asked for um, a deviation from the schedule because she wanted to attend her friend's wedding and no children were allowed. So she asked if we could switch days. And then from that point on, from September 26th till, uh, well, that whole day it looks like, we went and we worked it out to where we made that happen. Okay. So there was a deviation from that. Okay, and specifically, what was the what, what was the plaintiff requesting? She says on um, at seven oh six p.m. She said, "Maybe I could make up the time I'll miss on October first by keeping her Sunday night on the next exchange week, and you can spend Friday night with her." And then. I think she was only asking for like a three-quarter day or it wasn't really quite fair in my mind. Mm -hmm. And so what I had offered for her is to actually see if, if, if does she have a staff. So I, I go on to say, do you have a staff development day soon that you could use the makeup day? And then she said that she, she had a half day. Ultimately, in the end, I was just wanting to try to make sure it was as fair as possible or even a little bit more time than what she was actually offering. Have you ever, um, have you ever withheld the child from the plaintiff? No. Um, if you will turn to page... This is where she sent me a flyer for gymnastic class show. It was a performance that, I mean, I'm sorry, that our child would be um, performing at because she was in gymnastics at that time. Okay. So it was a flyer stating that it would take place on November 21st okay. of 2021. Okay. And the actual performance. Did you know that your child was in gymnastics? I did not. That was the first I heard of it. Do, do you have an issue with that? No. You know, then I wished I was involved in the process, or I would like to review, I would have liked to review the legal consent form at least, like what the waiver was. Okay, and did, the, did your daughter attend that event? It looks like it was a no, show on the 21st. Yeah, if you look in the co-parenting app, um, when the event actually happened, we had all of our family there, all of our local family, aunts, aunts uncles, 
her brother, her sister, and our daughter didn't make it to the performance. And we weren't notified of that, so we were all there. And we just, we watched the performance, but we watched it without in her own performance. All right, and if you'll turn to page 12. Was there ever a, an excellent explanation given as to why um, everybody, everyone was left hanging? Yes, well, there was an explanation that, that stated in the app that she didn't meet her performance level. That she didn't get enough practice in to perform, but again, we weren't notified of that. We were expecting her to perform. Okay. Um, if you will turn to page 530. Uh, I see um, November 8th? No. October 30th. Oh, yes. Okay. okay. Oh, halfway down the page. Mm -hmm. What is the significance of this? This is where I reached out to regarding insurance because my Medicaid would be expiring or I'd be terminated. I did not renew it and I actually made the request to end the Medicaid because this particular year, I believe I was making on track to make sixty or seventy thousand that year, and I no longer qualified for the Medicaid benefits. And so on October thirtieth, I stated open enrollment <coughs> starts on November first, and I'll need to renew the insurance. For I, I obviously met get her on insurance, private insurance. So I had started the process of asking her if her job offers a good insurance plan, like if we could consider putting it on her insurance, because the, the, the court order in, that we were under stated that we could either both have insurance for our daughter, or we could, if only one party had insurance for her, then the other party would contribute half towards that. Okay. And so I was starting that process, and it goes on further. We kind of went back and forth a lot, but ultimately we decided together, she agreed that we go on the private PPO plan. <coughs> that I was researching only because on a PPO plan, if something happened with our daughter out of state, she would be covered. Whereas on the HMO plan that, that her coverage had, everything, if something happened out of state, it wouldn't cover her. Okay. Um, and so did you ultimately get that worked out? We did, we had it worked out and we agreed that our daughter would go on the private insurance that I'd researched and found. Okay. Now, um, what insurance do you have now? Let's strike that. Is insurance cover, uh, available for your new employer? Yes. So okay. now, <clears throat> now we have, as per this court's order, we immediately put her on my wife's insurance. Okay. Right after, the, right after the, within days of coming out of this court. And then with my company that I'm with now, Anthony and Sylvan, they offer a health savings plan insurance that can help supplement that insurance that she's being covered through United Care on my wife's policy. Okay. And have you shared that information with the plaintiff? It's all brand new and I don't really qualify for the benefits until after a certain period of time. And so, which is any day now, but as soon as I do get that, then I certainly would notify her of that. She has been notified of the United Care insurance through my wife. Okay. Have you heard the testimony? And is that what you are referencing on page 531, the PPO versus mm -hmm. Specifically on November 11th, 2021. Okay. okay. And if you'll turn to page 533. Um, 11, 
2021, mm -hmm. the significance of this conversation regarding um, a flight to... Yes, so that was what I had earlier talked about, how she had booked a flight um, that would take, be taking place eight days after that. <coughs> This was on, or this was on uh, November 16th that she notified me that a flight would be taking place on November 24th, flying to Detroit, Michigan, and returning on November 29th. However, as I, I told her, that the exchange was supposed to take place on November 28th. And so she had booked that flight eight days in advance, but had already decided to bring her back a day later after the court order exchange time. Okay. Is, is this an isolated instance? Well, it's common that all throughout here, there's so many instances where there's a lot of chaos, there's a lot of deviation from the, the schedule. And I don't mind making those deviations, but in this particular one, it ultimately got resolved. But it, it does happen often where there's no consideration or I'm not asked prior to the actual booking of the flight. And just recently, as far as itinerary goes, I was not given any itinerary when she went to Michigan and came back. I didn't get it until one day prior to her returning. And by that time, she took extra days as well because she claimed that she had three days according to the order that was filed on February 4th, the third of this year. <coughs> and uh, there was compensatory days, but there's no holding finding, I might add. But, but specifically, those three days that uh, Judge Rochelo awarded for her to be able to take with a certain amount of notice. But in the summer, specifically, I uh, can't remember, oh, June 28th until July 11th or 12th this, this year, she actually took those four days, not even three, she took four all on her own. And my understanding was that this court's order prevailed in the summer schedule. And so when that was the order, I booked all the tickets because that first ticket that we booked was, it was already expensive being a red eye because we got the court order to relocate on March 26th and we had to fly Basically, two weeks later, it wasn't a cheap ticket. Okay. okay, so I'm going to cut you off there because it's 10 to 5, and we still need to find you guys another day. So you can sit down, sir. Okay. Are you calling more witnesses other than your client? So you guys need what? Maybe an hour and a half or two hours? Maybe? I, it depends I, I, on how far, how much more testimony, because right now I would only need about 30 minutes. So you, are you thinking you have like 30 minutes-ish left, or? How much is too sick? October 21st, which is um, Monday. Good to go for us, Judge. Does that work for you, Ms. Warren? Um, Courts and Township Chiefs. Yeah, well, yes, that works. Okay, so we'll conclude then on it. On October 21st at 1 30. Um, yeah. Maybe we could talk a little bit about some temporary visitation in the meantime again. Uh, sure. Go ahead. Oh, no. Um, 
So last time we were here, uh, we talked a little bit about the child coming and just bringing some schoolwork, but that never materialized. Um, I believe she's in kindergarten. Two weeks. Yeah, she's in kindergarten. I don't see why we can just get a week. Do, did, uh, Ms. Barnes, did you guys look into that on your end or not? She went in there. We gave her schoolwork and she completed the schoolwork the last time that we, she was missing school, so I don't can, can you do that? Yeah. I guess just like that. I think that's what you're asking. Is that right? Well, there asking? was an opportunity if we wanted to talk to have her get more time this last time. Maybe spending a whole, you know, the whole week if she could bring schoolwork. So so long as it's being represented that she can bring schoolwork, maybe we could get, you know, a Friday to Sunday of the following week so she could have a, a week with her daughter. That's what I was saying. Just in the meantime, she hasn't seen her much at all since she relocated. Or Saturday through Saturday, or Saturday through Sunday, or something. So, an Austin, a Frontier flight from here to Austin, or San Antonio, is generally pretty low. Yeah. If you buy it within six weeks, it's you want to see the person know this? I can look it up right now. Yeah. Which yeah, I can help. Which, yeah. Did, uh, do you know? Which, I know she's only in kindergarten, so do you have any idea if the school will just let her do work from somewhere else for moms? Or Last time we were able to submit a court order, and they they looked at that and they let her just take handouts or whatever. Yeah, it was no problem. Last time, it was no problem. I'm, I'm fine with that if the parties are fine with it. Um, it looks like, I mean, when would you suggest this occurs, though? Yeah, as long as she's looking at the tickets. Yeah, I'm looking at it right now. And, okay. just... and would it be your anticipation your client would be paying for this, or? Well, he's a relocating party. I hope we would at least pay. Somewhere all it's two the whole round trip is about two hundred dollars. the one I just looked up is two hundred dollars round trip. But she can't fly by herself. Right. So, so right. four hundred, yeah. So dad or his spouse would have to come with her. So it's like it's like four hundred ish. Right. Um, since it is really last minute, I would have your client pay for her daughter's part of it and then you would you would have to assume yours or your wife's part to come with her. I know it's a hassle, it's a lot it's last minute. Um, do you have dates that you're proposing? Or? Well, it's cheaper if we do a Sunday, a Monday, or a Tuesday. So if we did maybe a Sunday through a Tuesday, the following Tuesday, I, I don't know, it's up to the court. If, but I have here. Well, I would want her to do the remote school for more than a week. So, like right. a, so you're suggesting Sunday to Sunday? Yeah, that would be fine. Sunday to Sunday. Is that is that the cost on a Sunday? Yes, two oh nine. I know that's a big travel thing. Two oh nine. It's uh pretty is pretty low cost. So you're saying you're gonna have more than like four tickets. It'll be like four tickets for me. Yeah, there would be a ticket here she with, the, with yeah. the child and then one back for him, which would be another 200. She's, she's, she's young she enough to fly by herself. Straight flight. Oh, she fly. is? If it's a direct flight? I mean, it's personally, nice. my children fly. I don't know if five year could fly Personally, direct. my kids yeah. fly in company, and I think it's great, but I, I, don't, I don't step into the decision making of any other parent. They let five year olds fly with that? I can't believe you have nuts. Well, they're really nice to them. They, they sit with you. You chaperone. I think you pay for. I don't know if it's an extra fee, but chaperone, them. right? They make one of their staff chaperone into mm -hmm. time and like directly walks in the gate. It's gate to gate. I know right. your daughter, so you guys would have to. But make she's pretty. She's pretty little. I've never. They give them those little wings. My kids are older. Do the parties? Very nervous okay. to do that with her dad. Sure. Can I comment on that? Um, I talked to the. It's up to you. I'm not going to step in the decision making of any parent. Spirit and. Um, Frontier. I know that Frontier actually will do it, but what Frontier says that you have to do is, is the other party has to purchase what they call a gate pass. And so right when she comes off the plane, as long as she's, of course, ID, they'll check her ID, and then that's when they release her to the other parent. The other parent has to get a gate pass. Right. 
So there's an extra I'm, fee for an unaccompanied minor that's a few hundred dollars each way. 150. 150. Um, for We're different airlines, it, it varies. It's up to the parents. But she is pretty young, so I wouldn't want to force any parent to make that decision. You're not comfortable with it. I wouldn't want my daughter to fly alone. I think she's she's nervous, yeah, she's sometimes flying, fine. and she's so used to her dad coming with her. Yeah, well, that's, that's sir, you have I've, to come back anyway for the 21st, right? So you'll be getting a time to come back from anyway. Correct. It's just I'll have to work. I won't be able to miss my tape work. No, I know. So I'm just saying for that ticket, you'd be buying anyway, right? Mm -hmm. um, for, the, for the hearing. Correct. So how about you guys have her go um, that Sunday before that, whatever that is? It's, it's the 13th. Monday. It's the same price, Patricia. Oh. Sunday and Monday of that week before it's exact same price. It's easier for you on Monday. Would be easier, yeah. So what's that date? The 14th. 14th. That's Columbus Day. For you. To, oh, that's a holiday. Columbus Day. Yes. It's October, October 14th. I don't know if it's a holiday for us. It's, it's just like federal courts. <laughs> yeah, it's not. A just holiday. federal courts. So it's not us. So the 14th would be okay then. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. It's okay. Uh, and then we're going to have mom pick up the cost of um, cheese ticket. And then you'll be back here on the 21st anyway, right? Fine. Okay. Okay. And I obviously am not going to have a decision issued on the 21st, so the assumption is that she'll be going back with you on that day. And then um, there was an order that was just entered um, um, for modifying or that mom can modify uh, FaceTime with um, notice. I'm just going to make sure. 30 minute notice. Yeah, sometimes he's with clients, so yeah, we don't want to see that used or. Well, we already talked about it. After court, we got together and we tried to. We made a decision that we would keep it what it was as long as there are some days she gets off a little later and she would just communicate and I think it's been going okay. Well, if I'm not able to make the call at 4.30, that doesn't allow the call to happen at 5. Oh, well, I didn't know that. I'm sorry. Uh, we agreed outside that she would be accommodated if it, she works late. Because sometimes he's with a client, so yeah. it's, it's, yeah, so there's no it's one else problematic. Can a phone call with the daughter when you're working? No, if, I'm, if, if she's at home with my wife, she has her own little tablet that she calls her and she keeps calling her. And so if I'm on an appointment with clients outside of the home, mm -hmm. I don't, I'm not able to stop what I'm doing and, and try to coordinate all that with such short notice, with 30 well, minutes. Why can't your wife accommodate it? Well, they don't she contact each other, yeah, first of all. She doesn't like it. Well, how about the window 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 and I, at five o'clock, maybe she gets off. She's a long day. Meeting with students on her end. It's just a slight accommodation. And be so she wakes up at six fifteen. Dad's wife doesn't have morning. to do anything but push the button to. We don't even have to do that. Just our, our daughter can push the button. She knows exactly how to set it up. So well, then, what's the issue? The issue is, is she's trying to call her at four thirty, and I'm not able to actually but your see. Your daughter the can answer. Where, your daughter okay, so we, we shouldn't be doing this, obviously, talking to him. Oh, I'm sorry. Just, I'm yeah. sorry. So it seems like you're, you are blowing this out of proportion. So sometimes dad's stuck in a meeting or something, and I guess that obviously happens, and sometimes you run it late. So what parents do is they communicate with each other, right? And they work it out. Your daughter's how old again? Five. So how many years of this do you have to do? 13? Wow. Yeah. So let's figure it out, right? I'm not going to micromanage you to this extent because it's honestly a waste of my time and a waste of your time because you're paying your attorneys to be making these arguments. So work it out, right? Just be polite, respectful to each other. Hey, I'm running late. Can you? Can we do the call at 5.30? Vice versa, okay? That level of cooperation is really in the best interest of your child. So that's why I'm asking you to do that because I don't want to have to micromanage your life for the next 13 years. Yes, sir. Okay? All right. So we're, we're back here, and we have the, the visit with mom worked out, I think, right? Yes, sir. Yes, and you're going to cover her ticket. Yes, okay. All right. Thank you, Ryan. Thank you. Thank you.